Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a thriller film, The Girl Who Got Away. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. On a dark night, a bleeding lady is standing on a lonely road, holding a knife in her hand. The little boy sees her, while his father's car is passing by the lady. He asks the father if they should help the lady, but the father says they should report it to the police. Strangely, driving down the road, they find a young girl running ahead of their car. It looks like she is getting rid of some captor. The father finally stops his car, and goes down to check what is happening. He tells the little boy to remain in the car and stay safe. After a while, the young girl comes to their car and begs for help. Just after the boy lets her in, the crazy bleeding lady also arrives and tries to break the window. Fortunately, the father comes back in time to knock her down. Soon after, the cops reach the scene to conduct investigations. Christina is an elementary school teacher, aspiring to adopt a teenage girl, nicknamed Student. After she has done the paperwork, something bizarre happens. A car accident is discovered on a remote road. The man who passes by alights to take a look at the mess, and finds someone is lying on the floor with severe injuries. He intends to call the police with his cell phone, but there is no reception in the deep mountain. So he calls for help on his car's wireless phone. Right after he does the report, a lady with bloodstains all over her face, appears right beside him. In terror, the man tries to figure out who she is, and what she wants to do. All of a sudden, the lady is shot dead by someone standing behind her. The man flees his car, but is also gunned down by the killer. This particular woman killer is named Elizabeth. Gerald, the retired sheriff, and Jamie, the young sheriff, have a discussion on Elizabeth. Twenty years ago, she kidnapped five young girls. Christina is one of the five. Unfortunately, Elizabeth manages to break free from the police car during the aforementioned car accident. Elizabeth is infamous for being a brutal and sadistic series killer. Back then, she rushed into another house to capture the girls and murdered their parents. When she was arrested, four corpses of the teenage girls were found in her backyard. Christina is the only lucky survivor. Now that Elizabeth is at large, Gerald worries that she will do harm to Christina, so he reminds Jamie to take good care of Christina. Jamie turns around to find a man pointing a gun at him. The man's property is frozen, and Jamie is here to force them to move out. The old man hates to leave the house where he has stayed for years, so he commits suicide before Jamie. The death of the old man makes Jamie resolute in protecting Christina from the impending peril. Comes the night, friends throw a birthday party for Christina. She takes this chance to announce her plan of adopting one of her students. Not until she finishes the sentence, the doorbell is rung. Christina answers the door to find Jamie outside. He informs her that Elizabeth has escaped from the police car. Christina is completely shocked upon hearing that. The painful memory vividly flashes through her mind, ruining her mood. Disturbed, she stops the celebration, and brings Student away from her house. Student is confused and upset, but Christina says she has no other choice. They arrive at the house of Christina's foster parents. Jamie is also there. He tells Christina not to worry so much, because many cops are sent out to search for Elizabeth. Christina replies that she will be Elizabeth's main target from now on. The same night, Elizabeth attacks someone in the toilet, and slashes him dead with a piece of broken glass. Gerald and Jamie have another conversation. Gerald reveals that Elizabeth was a nurse who took care of babies when their mothers were asleep. She had mysteriously disappeared from the hospital, and then the girls were reported missing. Among the girls, Christina spent the longest period of time with her. Now her captor leaves the prison, Christina wants to flee the city. However, while packing her luggage, she comes across the birthday gift from student. Reading the note written by student, Christina chooses to remain in the city. Her decision adds worries and anxieties to Jamie. He then visits Gerald at his house to find out more about Elizabeth. As the sheriff who handled Elizabeth's case 20 years ago, Gerald asks Jamie to prevent the same tragedy from repeating itself. Jamie retrieves the relevant documents on Elizabeth's case, and asks his colleague to restore the data of the video recorder. From there, they find a short video clip of Christina when she was only 10 years old. In the interview, Christina said something like she believes in Jesus. Jamie notices something unusual, and tells his colleague to increase the clarity of the video. On the other hand, Christina is watching the news about Elizabeth, with fears. She is thrown back to the olden days, when she was locked up and tortured. At this time, someone rings the doorbell. Her colleague asks her for a favor to take care of her child, as she needs to go back to school for a makeup class. Without a second thought, Christina agrees to help. And then, she plays a hide-and-seek game with the child at her house. A while later, she learns from her ex-boyfriend's mother that he is missing, and she cannot reach him via phone. The mother is filled with worries for her son, so she asks Christina to go check out his apartment. 
Christina ensures the mother that she will visit his house soon. To her shock, after she hangs up the call, the colleague's child is missing. When she feels paranoid, Jamie sends back the little girl, saying that she runs out of the house. Christina feels relieved that the girl is safe. Jamie tells her he is stationed outside her house to watch over her. Christina says she is adopted by her kind foster parents, and she wants student to feel the same love and concern. At night, Gerald and Jamie talk about the videotape. Jamie deduces from Elizabeth's words that a third party seems to be involved. Gerald shakes his head at such a hypothesis, and adds that the he mentioned could well refer to Jesus. Jamie then walks around the property to do a check. To his shock, Christina suddenly shows up before him. Jamie thinks she is awakened, but she is in fact sleepwalking. The next morning, Elizabeth wakes up to find dust and dirt all over her body. Before she leaves for work, she treats Jamie with a cup of coffee, and receives the latest update about Elizabeth. It is said that a truck stolen by her is found 40 kilometers to the south. The further away Elizabeth is, the more secured Christina is. And then, Christina drops by her ex-boyfriend's house. She calls his name, but no one replies. Christina enters his bedroom to find him already dead. She flees the house, thinking that it must be done by Elizabeth. Jamie wonders how Elizabeth knows the guy, and it could well be other murderers. After Christina walks away, Jamie's colleague shares her opinion about the ex-boyfriend's death. The two of them conclude that if Elizabeth is behind this, then there must be someone else to leak information to her. Otherwise, it is impossible for Elizabeth to know her ex-boyfriend's existence, as she is imprisoned for 20 years. Returning to school, Christina finds student missing. Student's friend reveals that she is in the church. Christina journeys to the church to discover a student making out with a boy. In a fury, Christina rebukes them and takes student away. In the car, Christina quarrels with student. At last, student gets so upset that she storms out of the car. In order to identify the third party, Jamie visits Elizabeth's hospital. A staff nurse recalls that Elizabeth was fired due to an affair she had with someone else. She adds that the man was in police uniform five years ago. By now, Jamie is led to think that Elizabeth's lover might be Gerald. He is reminded that Gerald is reluctant to comment on the third party in the video. Christina seeks student's foster dad to get her custody. The foster dad is a drunkard, but he threatens to reveal Christina's background. Soon later, Christina hears from student that she is aware of her unpleasant past. That night, Elizabeth sneaks into the foster dad's house. At first, he thinks the noise is from student. But as he walks back to his own room, he is shocked to find his wife lying dead in a pool of blood. Immediately after, Elizabeth slashes him to death. Student comes out of her room just in time to witness Elizabeth cutting the foster dad. Terrified, student flees the room without hesitation. And then Elizabeth gives her a chase. At this time, Jamie realizes some strange sounds around Christina's house. He surveys the place, only to find Christina sleepwalking and digging soil. The next day, Christina awakens in her house and bursts into a cry. She soon discovers that somebody has visited the house. She loses her temper before Jamie, but Jamie informs her about the death of student's foster parents. Right now, student has disappeared. Jamie wonders why Elizabeth does harm to the people around Christina. Jamie wants to probe further, but Christina shouts at him that she does not know anything. At this point in time, Jamie suspects that the one who helps Elizabeth is Christina. It is because Elizabeth really likes her and only spares her life. On top of that, during the time she disappeared last night, there was still time for her to commit a crime. Apparently, Christina happens to know that Jamie had dated Gerald's daughter. So Christina points out that what he has done to protect her is merely to make himself look good before Gerald. Jamie is rendered speechless. Later, Christina searches student in the church, only to find student's boyfriend dead, and Elizabeth is standing right next to him. Frightened, Christina escapes the church, but she cannot escape the sorrowful memory of the days she had with Elizabeth. She remembers that at that time, Elizabeth also chased after her in the woods. What's creepier, as soon as she looks up, she sees the house where she was locked up. On the other hand, Jamie's colleague manages to make the video even clearer, and discovers the third person. Receiving such an update, Jamie rushes to the church to ask Christina who tips off all the information to Elizabeth. In reply, Christina tells him she used to write a letter to Elizabeth monthly, and she ever told her about the ex-boyfriend and student. Meanwhile, they are informed that student has been found dead. Christina breaks down at student's death, and she leaves after bidding farewell with her. In the meantime, Jamie learns from his colleague that the video was taken one week before Christina ran away from Elizabeth. At that time, all the other girls should have been killed, but strangely, another girl was found in the mirror reflection. Christina goes back home to scream hysterically, and smash things all over the place. The staff in charge of her adoption plan visits her. 
Soon they argue about the death of student and Christina kills him. She says that she is not Christina. The truth is the real Christina was captured and killed after she ran away. It is so traumatic even now. She digs soil to uncover Christina's body when she sleepwalks. More shockingly, she is the sixth girl in the room. Jamie arrives at her house to unravel the story. She admits that she is Elizabeth's daughter, but pretends to be Christina. Jamie arrests her. At the same time, Gerald and his wife are watching the video of Christina at home. His wife wants to go for a walk, but is shot dead at the door. Gerald is alarmed by the gunfire. Upon seeing his wife's corpse, he alerts his daughter to call the police. Immediately after, Gerald becomes the next victim. Gerald's daughter gives Jamie an emergency call. Meanwhile, Elizabeth imagines herself to be the owner of Gerald's house. In fact, the fake Christina is the daughter of Elizabeth and Gerald. That is why Gerald asks Jamie to protect her once Elizabeth breaks free. Jamie drives down to Gerald's house together with the fake Christina. He first discovers his ex-girlfriend lying on the floor and bleeding profusely. She tells him the killer has grabbed her child. The fake Christina decides to face the music. Following the baby's cry, she steps into a room. As soon as she picks up the baby, Elizabeth appears before her and claims that she has done all these for her. Elizabeth hopes her daughter will appreciate her love, but what she has received is a heavy stab in the belly. Elizabeth does not give up easily, so she surprise attacks her daughter when she is about to take the baby out of the room. In a pinch, Jamie pulls the trigger to execute Elizabeth. The movie then ends with the fake Christina revealing that her real name is Katie. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.